Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Thursday Night Tackle Bites. Those of you who don't know me, I'm your host, Jim Carr. And every other week, I fill in for Victor Lynch. That way, it kind of gives him a little break. So, uh, over the past several times I've been on here, I've been doing a series on crappy fishing. And once again, this week, I'm going to do the same thing. But this will probably be the last um, series uh, on the crappy fishing. And we'll go off onto something else when I come back up again. What's it going to be? I don't have a clue, but I'm sure I'll come up with something. But, um, you know, we'll pick up more on the crappy fishing maybe on towards summer. Uh, we've got a bunch of different techniques we use in the summertime, but um, we just want to keep a variety of things on Thursday night tackle bites for you guys to watch. Listen, guys, you can go out and you can catch crappies the old-fashioned way, throwing a jig over the boat and reeling it in, or putting a minnow on with a hook, sinker, and a float, and throwing it in a brush pile. And if you don't get tangled up, tangled up you're probably going to catch a fish, but... There's a lot of other technical ways out there, more technical I should say, to fish for this species that I think sometimes can produce more fish and larger fish, especially in conditions where the fish, you know, the crappies may not be very active. Uh, you know, you're going to have a spring spawn time coming up here really soon. A lot of you guys in South Carolina right now, your water temperature's up in the 60 degrees, your crappies are spawning. So, you know, this technique here that I'm going to talk about tonight is going to be something you would probably use in a pre-spawn or post-spawn time. You probably are not going to do this when the crappies are spawning because they're going to be in one area where you're going to be able to find them. All right, so anyways, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about two techniques that I think a person probably should use if they're looking for pre-spawn or post-spawn crappies, you know, when they're not where you think they're going to be. Like I was saying, right now in South Carolina, you can pretty much be sure they're going to be in areas where they spawn in brush around docks, you know, rocky, sandy areas. So you can pretty much be sure that's where they're going to be. But there are those times throughout the summer and early spring where crappies are kind of spread out and you gotta hunt, you gotta hunt them down. So two techniques I wanna talk about this evening is gonna be the use of planer boards, which is something you see us use a lot of on our show for all different types of species of fish. And also, I want to talk about what they call a spider rig. Now, both of these techniques, guys, a lot of your tournament anglers will use these techniques because it allows them to cover a large amount of water very quickly and to capitalize and target active fish. Why fish in an area or why fish on a brush pile if you've got fish that aren't biting and they're not active? When you can actually pull planer boards, or, or jigs or live bait through areas where you can find multiple numbers of crappies that will respond to what it is you're, you're introducing to them. So anyways, as you can see behind me, I'm back at my artistic abilities again, uh, drawing more pictures. So we're gonna cut away and go to the board here where I can get a little bit closer shot to show you. And I'm gonna demonstrate to you on the board behind me here, the two different ways that, um, that we crappy fish a lot of times. I know you've seen us before, fishing brush piles with Alan Greer from Triad Bait Company. You've seen us uh, with uh, BJ Ayers from the Trophy Ridge Planer Board Company that, you know, using planer board. So I just, I just, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to go out and fish. I don't care what technique we're using as long as it works good and it catches fish. So that's what I'm going to do, try to do tonight is show you two techniques that I use and some of the guys and the guides that I know uh, use quite frequently. So let's cut away to the board and we'll show you the planer board trolling technique and we'll also talk about the spider rig technique. 
All right, I hope that everything here is in proportion. It's going to show up pretty good for you this evening. I don't really have an easel, so I just kind of have to lean this up against here. You know, I got a studio with about every piece of equipment you can think of, and I don't have an easel, but anyhow, we'll do the best we can. Now, what I want to talk about first is the planar board technique, which is on this side of the board, okay? This is a pretty elaborate setup I have here, and this perhaps is something that a guy would use if he's a trophy, fisher, trophy fisherman out uh, trying to catch uh, large numbers of fish or, or bigger numbers of fish in a tournament situation. But we have your boat, and the way I would fish with this right here is I would have a trolling motor. Now, you've heard us talk about iPilots and autopilot trolling motors before. You don't need one, you can use a foot control trolling motor if that's all you have. I'm not telling you you have to go out and spend, you know, big bucks to be able to fish like this. But we happen to be using an uh, iPilot trolling motor, which is really nice because you can set up a, uh, especially if you have one that, that uh, talks to your depth finder, you're able to put two waypoints in and, and the trolling motor will automatically talk to the depth finder and control the boat, the boat from point A to point B, which is really nice. If you don't have that, then you just have to look at your depth finder and, and um, just use your foot control. But anyhow, what we have here is we have a basic, you can do this either with four planer boards or with six planer boards. I would suggest to you if you're fishing by yourself, you use probably four planer boards because it can get quite hectic at times. So. What you do is you set up your planer boards, so you have on each side, you have two rod holders on the back. You can put three rod holders in the back. This is just one way that we do it. We've done it before with three rods in the back, you know, and nothing in the front. It's, that's entirely up to you guys, whatever's easier for you. And your rod in the back, wants to be the furthest planer board from the boat. And I'm going to explain to you why. The first thing you need to do when you're doing planer boards is the furthest rod out wants to be up high enough to keep your line out of the water. Your line from the rod to the planer board does not want to be in the water touching the water because what it's going to do is it's going to hit the water and it's going to pull this planer board and this planer board is not going to track right. These things are designed to pull tension away from the boat, and that's why they stay a lot, so many, so often they stay nice and neatly and lined up. You know, you see when we use them there, they're out there and they stay lined up with the boat because they're designed to pull away from the boat. But if you get this line in the water, what's going to happen is it's going to drag and it's going to cause this planer board to do things you don't want. Now. So the last rod, put it up high enough so your line is out of the water or out of the current. And set this one out. The distance there again, it's up to you, however far you want to have it out. Crappy fishing, I would probably put this furthest one out here, about 30 feet minimum if I'm using two boards. Uh, a lot further than that if you, if you want to but you try to set up what they call a stair step pattern. And what that is, is your planer boards are set up in the configuration where it looks like you're going up a set of stairs, okay? Now, the next planer board still wants to have the line out of the water, but if this one's out at 30 feet, you only want this one out at like 15 feet. Now, you're saying to yourself, well, what happens when I get a fish on here? He's gonna get tangled up. No, he's not, guys. If you have this thing up high enough, like I told you, when this fish gets on, typically this planer board is going to go right underneath the line right here and come back. So all you have to do is walk to this corner of the boat and this fish is going to pull this planer board right underneath that one. Okay? And you just have to reel them in. So it's pretty much a tangle-free operation. Now, 
your line behind your boat, your, your, your plane of boards, there again, it's going to depend on the weight you have. You know, you don't want to have more line behind the planer board than the depth you're fishing because then it's going to get tangled up. So that's what you have to watch for. Boat control, like I said, uh, if you're pulling with your trolling motor or if you're in the wind, uh, if you have no wind, you're going to want to use your trolling motor to keep the boat moving in a direction you want to go in. If you're going too fast because of the wind, you may want to throw out a couple of drift socks, at least one. And these are a pretty neat thing. Uh, guys have used these a lot up on the Great Lakes for walleye fishing for, for probably 20, 30, 40 years. And, and this is a really um, effective way to fish. We do it a lot catfishing on Santee. Uh, it'll slow the boat down. Typically, you want to be going probably about 0.3 to maybe a maximum of 0.5 miles per hour to a half, you know, half a mile an hour when you're crappy fishing because they're not, crappies aren't going to chase these things too far. We're going to be over here and we're going to be using what they call a spider rig. Now a spider rig, guys, is where one fisherman would sit in the front of the boat and he would work the trolling motor. And if, if you're the only guy in the boat, that's where you'll be. But if you had another guy, you had a buddy with you, he would sit in the back. And if you can see how I have these, I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but let me go ahead and do the rods in red. You got a rod here, here, one here. And that's right, there's a lot of fishing rods on this boat. Some states you can't use these many rods. But we'll just say for the fun of it, we're fishing in North Carolina, okay? A lot of these guys, when they use these rods, they're anywhere from, well, I've seen them 7 foot, but most guys generally will use a rod that's 10 to 12 foot long and even sometimes 14 foot long. And they'll vary them. This might be a 14 foot rod, this might be a 10 foot, this might be a 12. So that these lines are all fishing almost like a planer board, but in different areas of the water. Now. When you get a fish on, all the guy does, he just reaches down and picks up the pole because generally you're fishing in the depth of water, that's the length of your rod, okay? In other words, when you put your rod out, you let your bait down to your reel. If you've got a 14 foot rod, a 14 foot rod, you're about 14 foot down. So that's the, the depth range you're gonna be fishing in. So it's an effective way to fish. You can cover a lot of water really quickly. Bait-wise, uh, you can use jigs. You can put minnows on here. What's nice about this, well, when me and Alan fish, we'll put different type jigs, and you've seen us before, we use different type techniques on each rod. And that helps us to find out what the fish are doing at a particular time. Okay guys, well I hope I didn't go too quickly through that demonstration to where you weren't able to follow it. Uh, sometimes I can get going pretty fast here and um, you know the thing to do is just to watch for upcoming shows where we'll be using these techniques fishing with the uh, the Trophy Ridge planer boards. Um, these happen to be uh, their uh, the crappy planer boards. I like them really well. They're really light. These things probably weigh half of what a normal planer board would and um, really high quality uh, Things that, you know, uh, BJ builds them with. Everything is stainless, so it's not going to rust. The board is, is virtually indestructible. If you go to uh, TrophyRidgePlanerBoards.com, look up on BJ's videos on his website. He has a demonstration on there, and I, and I think it's on his YouTube page also, where he literally runs over these with a truck. And like I said, they're pretty much indestructible. And if you ever have any issues with them, all you've got to do is let BJ know and he will take care of it for you. But um, I guess that's one reason why we like to use this product is because of the, you know, the guarantee that he gives you with them and because they're just really a good, uh, a good piece of equipment to have on your boat. But all right, guys, so if anybody out there has any questions or comments, be sure to go to our YouTube page. And that way, if you don't get our television show, you can follow 
all of our TV shows there. We upload them to YouTube so that guys that don't get them can watch our show there. Uh, we also have a channel on Roku that we're on and, and, a, and a bunch more uh, video on demand channels also that we're, we're on. But uh, subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to get updates when we do upload more videos. You can do that by going to youtube.com backslash user backslash the outdoor sportsman. Um, and just hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we put on a video. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Thursday Night Tackle Bites. Remember, Victor Lynch will be back next week with his program doing something else on bass fishing, I presume. And uh, like always, I'm Jim from Caroline Outdoor Magazine TV. We'll catch you in the next video or the next show somewhere in the great outdoors when we do it all again. Thanks for watching and thanks for tuning in, everybody.